By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing an EC game. That means the rules of Eternal Central. So you're going to see Fallen Empires. You're going to see Mana Burn. And uh, I am playing against Matt. He is a patron uh, of the channel. Welcome, Matt. This is your first match, I think, of old school in general. So that's going to be exciting. And I believe you are bringing a black brown deck to the table and with brown i mean artifacts so he's bringing uh, a deck with yakmov demon yakmov priest and a lot of artifacts i'm actually the list is really cool so i'm in the deck deck section definitely going to take a moment to look at your deck and to go through all those synergies in there and i'm actually playing with an, my deck orc assassin so it's a combination of orc and of royal assassin those two combined and of course We've got the four strips in there because we are playing Eternal Central. Now, if you'd like to go straight to the games, you can do so by checking the description below. There you will find a timestamp entitled MTG Games. Click on there. That will take you straight to the games. Here we are going to continue with the deck decks. And we're actually going to start with my deck, Org Assassin. And here we see my deck, Org Assassin. And as you can see, it's named after the three royal assassins that you find in this deck. And of course, the Org um, now the interesting thing is, uh, this deck is initially built around the Orc, you know, the 6-6 Trampler from Fallen Empires for 2 red and 3, and of course it has that downside that it cannot attack when the opponent controls a creature greater than power 2 that is untapped, and also it cannot block any creature that has power greater than 2. Now, um, for me, the keyword here is that it says the creature must be untapped. So then I started thinking, wait a minute, if I combine this with Icy Manipulator, I can tap down the bigger creatures and I can attack with my Orc. And that led me to obviously playing with Paralyze. And then I started thinking, wait a minute, if I'm tapping everything down, I might as well kill it in the process. So then I started to add my Royal Assassins. And then I thought, wait a minute, this is Eternal Central. I know there are a lot of wait a minutes in this deck deck, <laughs> but that's really how it happened. I'm talking you through the process here. I thought, hey, wait a minute, I can play with those arena card uh, that I know of that was um, with that publishing house. You, you got it for free when you uh, bought books of, of the publisher. Um, I forgot the name of it, but anyway, uh, they have this little, little pen logo. So I looked in my binder and I found two arenas. So I decided to put them in. The cool thing about arena is uh, it's basically a fight ability, right? So it's, it's a land, it comes into play and it doesn't uh, provide any mana unfortunately then it would be even better but you can pay i think three and tap it and then um, you can choose a creature to fight a creature of your opponent now your opponent gets to choose what creature they want to put into the arena okay so that's up to them but of course me having a six six creature to put in my arena i'm feeling pretty confident that i will win this duel another nice thing about this is that i'm also playing with four rook eggs so rook egg kind of came with the arena where i thought okay Again, wait a minute, if I put my egg in the arena and my egg dies, I'm getting a 4-4 flyer. It's a great deal. And my opponent has a tapped creature that I can then kill with my Royal Assassin. So there are just a lot of synergies around getting creatures tapped, basically, in this deck. And I'm, I'm really excited about this brew. I've uh, played it in an Atlantic match before uh, against MTG Phil, and then I felt I was a little bit unlucky and my deck wasn't tuned as well as it is now. So I'm more confident. It's still, you know, I'm not going to tell you that this is a top tier deck or anything, but I think for for a tier three, tier four deck, this is just a lot of fun. And I I, I think it can be quite successful. Now, uh, you might wonder why I didn't board in uh, three chain or, or chain lightnings instead of lightning bolts, or maybe both. Um, it's always difficult to find space for all these cards. And I've decided that for me, the value of Lightning Bolt being able to, to deal three damage to any target at instant speed for me is more valuable uh, than having uh, that effect at sorcery speed. And I do realize that you can, I can now not play the combo Chain Lightning on my Rook Egg and then pay two red and deal three damage to my opponent as well. So I'm just going to decide that, that that's not in it for me during playtesting. I found just the power of having instant speed three damage more valuable than that Rook X synergy with the Chain Lightning. Now, some other cards here on the side um, in the deck, because there's no sideboard on this picture, actually. There is a sideboard, 
but it's not all that interesting. Um, but the other cards there on the right side, you see Demonic Tutor, Mind Twist, kind of an auto-include, Wheel of Fortune as well, just such a powerful card to get back into the game when you're behind. Um, and I'm also packing three Felber Stones. I really doubted whether to go for um, instant mana with Dark Ritual or to go for more long-term mana with Felber Stone. Now, I decided since, you know, my Orc is, is double red, um, I thought, you know what, I'll just put a Felber Stones in. It's maybe more long-term value than short-term value. So that's why I went for the Felber Stone instead of for the Dark Ritual. But, but that's still kind of, I feel like I need more testing to determine what's actually more valuable for me in this deck, the Dark Ritual or the, uh, I mean, the, the Felber Stone or the Dark Ritual. Let me know in the comments below if you have a thought about that, by the way. I'd love to hear from you. What do you think is the better option? Okay, so this is my deck and I'm playing against Matt and he's playing a pretty cool deck. Let's take a look at his list. And here we see the deck of Matt and I've called it Jock Moff's Gang. And I think uh, there are a few things that I noticed when players who haven't been playing old school magic come back into old school. They, I think they do two things really well. First of all, they play with what they have and that leads to huge creativity and very interesting deck lists. Second of all, they play with what they love. So I can clearly see here that Matt must be a fan of Yakmov Priest, right? And Yakmov Demon, and also of Nether Shadow. Those are not your obvious picks. So I think those are like two great things that, that new, old, new, old school players bring to the table. Uh, if you kind of get what I'm what I'm talking about um, now, let's dive into this deck because I think it's quite interesting um, There is definitely a sacrifice theme in this brood now uh, Yakmov priest is here for the people that don't know it's one black and one to cast you can tap it to sacrifice a creature And then you get black mana equal to the casting cost So for example, he can sacrifice an onulet He can gain two life because onulet gives you two life when he goes to the graveyard and he gets some black mana in return So he can ramp he can use that ramp, for example, to play an early Fallen Angel, because it's five usually. He can use that ramp to play an early Tetrafis, to play a Yagmoth Demon, 6-6 six, six, Flying First Strike, real powerhouse. So those are definitely options in there. Another nice piece of synergy here are, of course, the four Drain Lives. So he can use his Yagmoth Priest to sacrifice a big creature like Yagmoth's Demon, like, for example, Tetrafis after he's taken off. The 1-1 one, one Tetravites, he can sack it, he gets sack six black mana for that, and then he can drain his opponent for a lot, right? So that's really cool synergy. He's also playing with one Guardian Beast that's quite interesting that can protect his artifacts. Now, um, another creature I want to talk about that we don't see often is actually really cool, but I have to admit it's understandable that you don't see it often, is a Nether Shadow. So Nether Shadow, I believe it's a rare two black for a 1-1, one, one, and it doesn't have summoning sickness, so it can attack the turn it comes into play, which is pretty cool. But the other ability is even cooler and quite unique in old school. If there are three creatures above it, it returns, it comes back into play. Well, actually, you can do that during your upkeep. So that's pretty cool, right? Especially in like a sacrifice-heavy deck. So if you kind of stack everything the right way, then maybe you get your Nether Shadow back the next turn and you can sacrifice it again. Um, I think what I would try to put in this deck, but of course I'm not sure if Matt, if you have those cards, I think I would look into Mana Vault, perhaps change those two Dark Rituals for two Mana Vault, see if you can get four Mana Vaults in total. The reason I'm saying that is because of Yakmov Demon. Yakmov Demon is a 6-6 flying first strike, which is fantastic. I think it's two black and four to cast. But there is this downside to it, and that is that you have to sacrifice an artifact. It eats your artifacts right? So if you have a mana vault, it's just great to feed to your Yakmov Demon. You use it for mana, you tap it, you don't have the intention to untap it anyway, you know, because you use it maybe to play out the Yakmov Demon early or to play uh, a Tetravis or to play an early Suchi, whatever. And then later in the game, you can give that as a snack to your Yakmov Demon. So maybe that's something uh, interesting to think about. Now, overall, I'm really looking forward to play against this deck. Uh, a little attention asked here for the Mind Twist Altar. We're actually both playing with Mind Twist. Okay, um, that Mind Twist Altar is pretty epic in the sideboard here of Matt. He's actually an illustrator as well, by the way. Okay, so this is the deck of Matt. Let's go to the games. Game number one. I'm sitting on the left, of course, with the Timmy Playmat, and on the right, Matt, who is playing with actually a Playmat he designed himself for the Commander's Brew. 
So that is pretty cool. He is an illustrator. Uh, okay, let's take a look at the match. Look at that. Good opening for me. Soul Ring turn one. And there's that. Mishra's Factory probably going in here exactly. Attacking for two. I'm dropping to 18. Playing a Bat Lance. Tapping four here. Royal Assassin. So taking a Mana Burn. Going to 17. Pretty happy with that Royal. And there is a second black. And tapping out here, drain life on the Royal Assassin. Pretty good move here. That means that Matt also gains a life going to 21. Yeah, the Royal is so vulnerable. It's such a cool creature, but it's so vulnerable. And there we see an icy manipulator. And now I've got to choose, am I going to tap down the factory or the swamps? It seems that I'm choosing to go for the factory, trying to prevent some damage here. And there's just a swamp in a past turn. So that's good news for me here. And tapping four, there's a Rook Egg. But I don't have that Royal Assassin, unfortunately, because that's another part of Synergy in the deck. I can attack with my Rook Egg and then it becomes tapped and then I can kill it with my Royal. And uh, it's really bad I don't have the Royal Assassin now because also with that Icy Manipulator, you have a really nice combo going on. So that was probably a really good choice by Matt to just get rid of that ASAP. And there is a Guardian Beast. 2-4 creature from the Arabian Nights, and as long as it stays untapped, it gives your artifacts indestructible. Tapping down one of his swamps in the end step, another Rook Egg. Now my problem here is that the Guardian Beast is a 2-4, so that's not ideal. Tapping down the Factory again. And there is a Suchi hitting the board here. Don't mind that too much. Actually hoping that he's going to attack with the Suchi, then I can block with the Rook Egg. There is another Icy Manipulator. That will give me a lot of control, and I'm actually tapping down two of his lands here. I don't really mind the Guardian Beast. I've got those two Rook Eggs on blocking duty, so I feel pretty confident here. And, oh no, Taunus' Coffin. Oh, oh, this is bad news. The reason I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this is that Taunus' Coffin can put a creature, you can tap it and can remove the creature out of the game. And when Taunus' Coffin is untapped, that creature comes back onto the battlefield tapped. Now the problem is, if you put a, um, if you put a token into the coffin, then it actually disappears. It's kind of like that unsummon effect, right? When you unsummon, the token, it doesn't go back to your hand because it's not an actual um, permanent, right? So it just disappears. So I believe I have the same problem now with the Taunus' Coffin. He's attacking now. Yeah, so he's going to do this, I think. I'm blocking with the Rook Egg. That means I'm getting a 4-4 Bird token at the end of Matt's turn. And then Matt can actually put that Bird token into the box and then it disappears. So let's see if that is actually his play. And let's see. First, let's gotta let's wait until the end step, because then I'm getting my uh, my four four. And okay, I guess I guess yeah. So my bird token is coming into play, and yes, he's using it. So he's putting it in the coffin. That means it's the end of my four four. And I mean, this Thomas's coffin actually is a really good weapon against my rook eggs. I never realized that this is a problem. Now I'm playing with two Shatters main. I really need to draw into my Shatters here, I feel. I have those Icy's, of course. There is an Arena. So usually the Arena would be a great card with the Rook Act. It's basically what I want to do, right? I want to use my Arena to let my Rook Act fight with the creature of my opponent so that my Rook Act can die. Now, of course, my opponent can choose what creature he wants to put in the arena, so he can simply choose for um, the Guardian Beast. So this is not like a rock-solid plan, but, you know, when your opponent only has a bigger creature, it can work quite nicely. Now, anyway, he's attacking again, and I'm just going to block. I know what he's already going to do, but do I really have a choice here? So it's going into the box. That means it disappears again. And in his end step, I'm going to tap some stuff down here. And I'm kind of stuck here, just have to pass turn. That means that Matt will have time to kind of build something up and I have to find a solution for, um, 
for Titanus's coffin. It's just a big problem here for me. There is a dark ritual, okay. Into a GM day tome. And what does he want to do with the other mana? Maybe leave it open for his Tannis' coffin. And of course I'm going to tap down his creatures before combat so I take no damage. I mean I'm still on 17, I have all the time, I have to pass here, just drawing one turn, but I'm not really happy with seeing that GM day tome because that's going to give Matt card advantage. And he's actually pretty much in the driver's seat at the moment. So again, I'm tapping down his creatures. Um, he played that strip mine. There is another Suchi. That means that next turn he can start dealing some damage because I can only tap down two creatures with my two ICs. And I'm just passing turn, not really finding anything. Just lands, I think. I really need to get those two shatters. I play with two main and two in the sideboard, so those two from the sideboard are probably going in after his first game. Because his deck is pretty artifact heavy. Let's see, wants to attack and gonna tap both of the Suchis. Now I have to do this before I know with what he's going to attack with. And the question is, is he going to attack with the Guardian Beast? Yes he is, so if I would have had a Shatter, it would have been a nice play here because uh, the uh, Guardian Beast also makes all the artifacts of Matt indestructible, but when it taps, that effect no longer exists. And there we see a Fallen Angel, pretty cool card, 3-3 three, three Flyer, which is strange because when you look at the picture, the wings are cut off from the Fallen Angel and it's fallen. But, um, oh, this is pretty cool actually, the, uh, the Org, 6-6. Six, six. And my opponent doesn't have enough mana to use the Tannis' Coffin. So I can actually activate my arena now and I can get into a fight. So then I'm curious to see what creature he's going to choose. Is he going to choose the Fallen Angel, for example, sack some creatures to kill my orc? Or I think a Suchi could be an option. Okay, he's picking the Suchi. And that means that he can use the four mana he gets from the Suchi to draw an extra card with the Jam Day Tome. So that's kind of an understandable choice here. But at least it's, I mean, it's good news for me. I do need to tap the orc, because they tap when you let them fight with each other. Um, but it's good news for me, because I, of course, still have that icy. I can tap down two of his creatures. And it looks like I'm really forgetting to, to tap my orc, because that does have an effect. Because with the orc, I can actually tap the guardian beast if he chooses, or uh, block the guardian beast if he chooses to attack with that. So I should really tap the orc down here. Pointing out the card. I'm just really happy to play with Arena. I think it's pretty cool. And just putting my Orc in the Arena, it's something I really wanted to do here. Okay, there we go, finally. Finally, I noticed that I actually have to tap it down. And he's now going to attack, so he wants to declare his combat, and in response, I'm probably going to tap down both of these creatures, or am I not? Am I going? Yeah, I'm going to tap them down. And then he's going to swing in with his Guardian Beast. And okay, it seems we're <laughs> it seems we're not quite clear what I want to tap down. Sorry, Matt. I was kind of uh, I wasn't very clear with that. I'm sorry. Oh, this is cool, Yakmov Demon. Sweet. Antiquities Powerhouse, flying in first strike, destroying my City of Brass here with the Strip Mine. And this is an interesting choice actually from my opponent because he has to feed the Yakmov Demon artifacts. And uh, I'm not sure if that's really what he wants to do looking uh, looking at, at, his, at his artifacts. You don't want to lose a Suchi, a Jame Day Tome or that Tannis' Coffin. So quite an interesting choice here. Now, the problem for me is the Yakmov Demon is a 6-6 six, six first strike. So if I activate Arena to put my Orc uh, into the Arena, then my opponent is simply going to choose for the Yakmov Demon and my Orc is going to die. And look at that, another Icy Manipulator for me. So all three Icy Manipulators of my deck are now on the board. And this means really bad news 
for uh, for my opponent Matt here because he has a Yakmov Demon that wants to eat artifacts and I can simply tap all his creatures down. Let's see what's gonna happen here. First he needs to decide what is he going to feed to the demon. And he's feeding him the book. Wow, interesting choice. The book is such a valuable resource. I wonder what his plan is with the Yakmov demon. Maybe he's got a priest in hand as well and he wants to sack it or something. Because now I'm going to tap all his big threats down. And remember, I can actually block that guardian beast. Okay, he's going to put the orc into the box. So orc is out of the picture here and he's going to attack now. That means I'm dropping down to 13. And there's the Yakmov priest. And then next turn, I think he can do it in a way that he can first sack if he wants to sack his Yakmov priest or Yakmov demon to the priest so that he doesn't have to pay the tax, the upkeep cost. Not a hundred percent sure about that, by the way. So let me know in the comments below. And oh, actually, he cannot use the Yakmov priest because it only works on artifacts. Okay, so, uh, silly. Sorry, I apologize. So Yakmov priest is a 1-2 from the Antiquities expansion. You can tap it to sack an artifact and then you get black mana equal to the casting cost. So for example, if he sacks the Suchi, he will get four black mana and he will actually get the four colorless as well from the Suchi because Suchi gives you four colorless when it goes to the graveyard. So that's eight mana, so that's a big chunk of mana. But first he will have to decide what he's going to sack, sack to the Yakmov Demon. I just really feel, I understand, Matt, that Yakmov Demon is a cool creature, but I mean, I, I feel that that card kind of set you back instead of uh, brought you forward, you know, gave you anything. And look at that, he's sacking the Yakmov Demon to the Fallen Angel. So that means Fallen Angel gets, I believe, plus two, plus one, so it turns into a 5 4. I think that's a good decision. So he can actually, oh no, I still have those Icy's. So I'm just going to tap everything down. And look at that. He's going to sack the Suchi to the priest, getting four black, four colorless. And does he have enough? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to drop to three here, and my opponent's going to gain ten life. <laughs> really nice, Matt, to see the synergy going. And of course you're going to get mana burn, so three mana burn from the Suchi, because he only spent one mana from that colorless that he got from the Suchi, so three mana burn, so he gains seven life in total. I'm on three here, and things are looking pretty bad for me. Also, he still has his Donis' Coffin. And look at that, I'm actually deciding to shoot down the Priest, because I want to protect myself from a drain life, but... Look at his mana. One drain life is enough. He doesn't really need the mana from the Yakmov Priest. And there it is. There is the drain life. Well done, Matt. Well done. You got this first game in the bag. And please take into consideration that Matt hasn't played um, old school. Actually, this is his first old school game um, in kind of this new era of old school that we're in. So please take that into account. And uh, wow, nice, man. Your first game and you win it. Congratulations on that one. We're going to go and dive into our sideboards and uh, we'll catch back up to you in game number two. Okay, here we go. Game number two. So after losing that first game, at least I'm on to play. There we see uh, my opponent, Matt, here shuffling up still, drawing his starting seven. I believe I'm actually going to keep... Oh, he's taking a mulligan. Okay, that explains. So he's going down to six. At least he's on the draw. And again, a soul ring. Wow. So I had a first turn soul ring in game one. Now in game number two as well. So very lucky here. There is a swamp and a pass turn. Can I find a red source maybe? Play out a rook egg, for example. Let's see what I can do here. Apparently, it's a difficult choice to make. Okay, there's a Badlands. Tapping two, playing a Felwer Stone. 
And that Felwer can make black mana because of that swamp on the side of Matt and passing turn. Oh, look at that Chaos Orb. And actually, funny thing, Matt told me that he actually pulled this Chaos Orb out of an unlimited booster. So that is pretty cool, right? And he hasn't flipped in ages, so it's going to be interesting to see that. There is a strip mine on one of his swamps. And then, of course, I'm going to use the Icy to tap down his swamp. And I actually mentioned to him that he can still use that one mana from the swamp to activate his Chaos Orb if he wants to. And it looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. So he's going to flip here and he hasn't flipped in ages. So this is going to be his first flip in a long time. And oh, you can see that it is completely off. And I remember that we kind of discussed like what is the best way to flip. Um, I'm not the best teacher, by the way, <laughs> to, uh, to teach anybody how to flip because I miss from time to time as well. And I'm actually going to, going to show him here the way I do it. Uh, I remember this. I think I'm actually missing my example flip. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Anyway, uh, we're continuing with the actual game. Game number two, when the dust has settled, Matt has lost his Chaos Orb, and I still have my Icy. So that's going to give me a huge advantage. Taking my turn now, let's see what I'm going to do. Tapping three here. And look at that, casting a Royal Assassin. And I've got a pretty deadly combo on the battlefield. I can tap his creatures down if he has any doesn't have any at the moment with my icy manipulator and then use my royal assassin to kill them there we see a first preach uh, creature yakmov priest deciding not to tap it down with my soaring maybe i don't want to take the damage from the mana burn playing a rook egg and still keeping the yakmov demon alive interesting here and will we see another drain life perhaps and end of turn, I'm going to tap my own Rook Egg, kill it with Royal Assassin, and get a 4-4 Flying Bird token. And look at that, the Yagmoth Priest is still around, attacking here with the 4-4 Flyer. That means Matt's going to drop to 16. I'm going to play another Rook Egg. Okay, now this is looking bad for Matt here. He has to start playing out something. Maybe the Tannis' Coffin again. That would be a great answer to this threat here on the table. And Matt is going through his hand, not finding an answer, passing turn. I'm doing the same trick again, getting another 4-4 Flying Bird token. That means I can attack for 8 now, then he's, he's going to drop. If I'm successful, he's going to drop to 8. That's exactly what's going to happen here. He's on 8 life. And now I'm also going to kill his Yakmov Priest. And he's finding another swamp. He's got five mana. What can he do with five swamps? Playing a fallen angel. At least he can chump block with that. But of course, I can tap it down with my icy and kill it instantly with my royal. And then, boom, this is it. Wow, that was a quick game number two. I think our orb flipping took longer <laughs> than this whole second game. Okay, 1-1. Uh, one, one. So that means we're going to game number three. Game number three. It looks like we're still shuffling up here. It is 1-1. One, one, and I believe Matt is on the play here after losing that second game. And in the second game, that was nice. A nice way to look at what actually um, my intention is of playing with Royal Assassin and Rook Egg in a deck. So I really want to use my Royal to kill my own Rook Eggs. And of course, if you also have an IC on the board, you can do that even quicker. And uh, luckily for me, Matt couldn't find his Thomas' coffin there. And Matt opening here with a Sol Ring turn one. That seems to be justice after I've done that in, in game one and game two. So uh, Matt's off to a good start here. I'm just playing a basic Swamp Passing turn. There is the Onulet for three mana, a 2-2 two, two creature from Antiquities, Artifact creature. And when it dies, I believe you gain two life. And there's a Felwer Stone for me passing turn here. That's going to be, make more black, but I'm actually looking for red mana, probably. And uh, Felwer Stone is always less useful when you're playing against the Monocolor deck. It's still ramp, but I wish it could make red mana as well. Attacking it with the Onulet, by the way, I'm dropping to 18. There's Yakmov's Priest. And playing a City of Brass, and there is a Royal Assassin. So now with the Royal, I can start killing the creatures again. I wonder if Matt has... A drain life again. That would be really useful for him at this stage. He is playing with a full playset of drain lives. 
first attack him, you're going to drop to 16 here. Now there are two questions. Does, is he going to play a drain life or exactly is he going to use the priest? He's going to use the priest, second the Onulet, gaining two life, going to 22 and of course gaining three black mana, tapping two extra and casting the Fallen Angel 3-3 three, three flying and casting a Nether Shadow. Really cool to see that one. He actually could have attacked with the Nether Shadow because it doesn't have summoning sickness. Tapping five here, casting an Orc. So that's a 6-6 six, six Trampler. And using my Royal to kill the Yachmov Priest. Now remember, I cannot attack with the Orc right now. Well, it's got Summoning Sickness, but even if it didn't, I couldn't attack because of that Fallen Angel. It's got three power. An Orc can only attack if the defending player doesn't control an untapped creature of power two of power greater than two. So starting at power three and up. And look at that, tapping Soul Ring, tapping one black. There's another Onulet. And Yakmov Priest, so really emptying his hand here. His problem, of course, is that Royal Assassin. But if he can get rid of the Royal, then I'm in trouble and I can't attack with the Orc. Need to get rid of that Fallen Angel. Icy Manipulator would be really nice. I could even consider playing a Bolt, kind of forcing Matt to sack creatures for his Fallen Angel. Oh, interesting. Demonic Tutor. I wonder, I wonder, I'm probably going to look up an Icy Manipulator, right? It works so well. Or maybe an Arena. Arena could work really well here also. Although he could put his Fallen Angel in the Arena and sack a lot of his creatures to kill my Orc. Then again, Fallen Angel comes back tapped. Because when, when you go into the Arena, your creatures tap. So my Orc taps, but also the creature my opponent chooses. Interesting. I wonder what choice I've made. And okay, okay, I've chosen to go for the Icy. Makes sense. Icy is just an extremely powerful card, especially in the deck that I'm playing with. Just being able to tap creatures down with my deck is so important because there's so much synergy with the Royal Assassin. Even with the Netling Imp, there's one Netling Imp in this deck. It also works great with that and of course with the Orc. So there are a lot of reasons for me to want to have an Icy Manipulator in play. But I think choosing the arena would have been a more fun play. So maybe you should have done that. And there's the JM Day Tome from Matt. Hopefully he can find some answers because he's under pressure again. And now he can start killing off his creatures. Probably starting here with the Fallen Angel. That means I can attack with the 6-6 Trampler. This is bad news for Matt. Now, what he can try to do is... I think he can get the Nether Shadow at least in the bin. And he is tapping... And then before damage is dealt, he's sacking it. And I believe actually we made um, a mistake here because, and maybe people know that are watching this right now, what's happening is he's declaring blocks before damage is dealt. He's sacking the uh, Onulet to the Yakmov Priest and then he's still taking damage, trample damage. And I'm not sure if that's correct. So please let me know in the comments below what should have happened in this scenario. Maybe he shouldn't have taken any damage from the orc that turn and just go up to life for the onulet. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, things are still looking dire for Matt here. He's always oh, actually sacking his jam day tome. Interesting choice. And always oh, doing that to kill. Ah, oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. He's actually killing. He's pretty low on swamps, it seems. I find this a very interesting choice. And with interesting, I mean, I probably wouldn't have done it. I Maybe I would have actually sacked the Soul Ring because then you would have had enough mana to also do the same thing. You would still have your book. On the other hand, then you would be really low on lands. And he's got, I mean, he's got a big problem with lands, uh, by the way, Matt. I didn't really notice that until now. You're really low on lands and it's kind of breaking you up. If you would have been able... To cast that Drain Life without sacrificing any of your... Um... Ooh, another Orc! Oh, this is looking painful. Any any of your artifacts, that would have been a lot better, obviously. Oh, and this is going to be painful. 12 Trample Damage on its way to stamp over Matt's board here. There's another Yakmov Priest having to take Mana Burn on top of that to make matters even worse. Going to drop to 15 here. And just attacking here, two six six tramplers. 
coming in and if he's going to double block that man what he can do of course is he can make sure that there are three creatures on top of that nether shadow over there and then at least one nether shadow will return to the battlefield during the upkeep but he's just taking 10 damage for now look at that gonna drop to seven and i just there's i, I there's no way out here for matt right what he needs is a balance, a black balance. And even then he would need to get rid of that nether shadow. And yeah, that's it, that's it. Showing what he has. And um, I'm sorry, Matt, for completely trampling over you in that game number three, but I wanna thank you for these games. It was a lot of fun to play against you. And your deck, man, I really appreciate it. I think it's really cool. Uh, like I said, in the deck deck, I think I would add mana volts. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a very cool deck to play. It's not an easy deck to play, uh, but a very cool deck to play indeed. Thank you for this, uh, for this game. And also thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Now, if you want to support the channel, you can do that by leaving a like, leaving a comment. Let me know what you think of our plays. And if we did that play with the Onulet correctly, I still kind of feel that maybe... Uh, my opponent, Matt, shouldn't have taken any damage at all. So I'm sorry for that, uh, Matt, because I remember I was quite convinced about you having to take four damage when we played the match. But now that I think about it, I'm not quite sure. So uh, if you know this, let me know in the comments below. Another thing you can do to help the channel, you can become a subscriber. So if you're not a sub yet, uh, please consider becoming one because it really helps the YouTube channel grow. Um, something else that you can do is you can become a patron on Patreon and that way you can sponsor the channel and you can actually help me continuing making these movies. So if you like this content, take a moment to check out my Patreon page. There's probably an info card popping up right now. You can click on there and that will take you to Timmy Talks' Patreon page and there you can see how you can support the channel by becoming a sponsor of the show. Um, talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the amazing, fantastic, super patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? 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 Ich bin